Hallelujah. And then it comes to the last, the last river this morning. And this one is the one with the long name. But it's a nice name. Very poetic. It's the enduring river of forward momentum. The enduring river of forward momentum. A well-known characteristic of any river is that it is a body of water that flows from one point to another. It is water that flows forward. When there is no water, it becomes a river bank. Amen. Right? When there's no river, you cannot, when there's no water, you cannot classify it as a river anymore because then it is just dry soil. And we said last week, we have the responsibility to get to God in order to not dry up. We have the responsibility to be in the Word and with Jesus so that we don't dry up. The river of forward momentum and endurance. I'm going to read to you another, another scripture this morning. And yet again, the, the biblical writers, they write it in such a way that you will have depth in understanding what God is saying to you. It says in Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. Let me stop there. The Bible says, and I want you to Im imagine it like this. Can you imagine with me? Amen. God has given you creative imagination. Imagine with me a massive stadium full of people. And in the middle of this stadium, there's a track like the Olympics. And people are running. And in the middle of this stadium, there is a big sign that says, the race called the life of faith. There are people all around looking at the people running, cheering them on, shouting to them, being excited about their run, looking at how they run, looking at what they do, but they are here at this race, and they're looking, and the Bible continues, it says, and then it gives some advice to the runners, it says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Now, a word that stands out for me immediately in the scripture is the word endurance. You know what endurance means? It means to keep on. It means to push forward. No matter if the legs are tired, no matter if you, if you want to give up, you press on. You press on against every circumstance, against every challenge. God says it's a steadfast heart to press on and to have endurance. And in the scripture, when I read it, I realized that there are two main enemies of endurance. Two main enemies of forward momentum. Two things that stops us from moving totally as Christians in this world. The first thing, the Bible says, it is the weights that weigh us down. The weights that weigh us down. Now, understand that the Bible, yes, says wait, and I believe this points to things that aren't necessarily sin, things that not ne can't necessarily be classified as sin. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about maybe you have a hobby, maybe you have a passion, maybe you have something in your life that is keeping you so busy that it draws your attention, it takes your eyes off of Jesus, and you stop running the race. Maybe it's something in your life, and I, I talk to people often and during the week, and, and I spoke to someone, and, and it's the same thing every week, <laughs> the same conversation. Oh, life is busy, Pastor. Yo, the busyness. Do you know the busyness of life? Come on, ask your neighbor. Neighbor, do you know busyness? Do you know how busy life is? Ask them, do you know how busy my life is? Like, whew. Right? And when I talk to them, oh, pastor is busy, busy. And I ask them, when are we seeing you at church again? We miss you so much. Right? We want you there. And I was like, oh, you know, when Sunday comes, pastor, I just want to sleep. <sighs> I'm tired. The week is so busy. I need my sleep. And I'm like, okay, okay. I, I'm praying for you. I hope you change. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this is what the Bible talks about. We are filled with so much busyness in our lives. Every moment of our lives, we're running from one thing to another. You get so busy, you don't pray anymore. You get so busy, you don't read the Word of God anymore. You're so busy, you can't attend a half an hour cell meeting. Hallelujah. You're so busy, two hours at church, two hours in a week with your God, your Creator, becomes too much. And when I, when I looked at this, I realized that this way down, at, at first glance, it doesn't look that serious. Like, yeah, maybe we're carrying a little bit of weight while we're running. 
But then the Holy Spirit showed me that this weight compiles. Starts to build up. Before you know it, it brings you to a total stop. That is what the enemy is after. That is what your enemy, the devil, is after. He wants to stop you from running the race totally. Before you know it, the things start to weigh you down. The second enemy of endurance is the sin. Say with me, the sin. Not any sin, the sin. The Bible doesn't talk here about sinful nature. It doesn't talk about sin in general. But it talks about that very sin that you allow into your life that maybe no one knows about, but that very sin that is stopping you from running the race. That very addiction that you're not getting done with. That very thing that God wants to heal you and set you free from, but you're not getting done with it. You love it too much. This is a moment of introspection. And what the Bible says is that this sin will trip you up. When you trip in a race, it's a very bad thing. When you run and all of a sudden you trip and fall down, it's a very bad thing. Let me tell you, the devil wants you to trip so hard that you break a bone and never stand up again. He wants to trip you so hard that you go out of the race, that you give up on Christianity, that you give up on the race of faith. You see, don't play around with sin because it will trip you up. Trip you up. Two things this morning. What are the weights that are weighing you down? What are the blockages for the river of momentum in your life? What are the sins that are tripping you up? Be careful. The Bible says those who stand that you do not fall. Take care of what is happening in your life because God wants you to run with it. I tell you, last year and the year before that, we had an awesome time here at the Harvest event. We had such momentum, and I thought about it as I was preparing as well. We had momentum as a church. Hallelujah. Do you remember the excitement there was in the air towards the Harvest event? Anyone who was at the Harvest event last year? I mean, it was powerful. This place was packed. Close to 500 people sitting here, worshiping God, experiencing the presence of the Lord. Over those Sundays, more than 100 people saved, but we had momentum as a church. We were working. We were talking. We were praying. We were phoning. We were WhatsApping. We were visiting people so that the momentum would go forward. We were serious about the things of God. We were serious about the kingdom of God and the race that we were running. But I realized the mistake that we had, that we thought the harvest was the end goal. It was merely a check. Because when the harvest came, the week after that, there was as if there was a break in momentum. It was as if the whole church had tripped. <laughs> we stopped running, stopped praying. We felt tired. We felt, oh, we did it. It was an awesome event. Now we can rest. Two months till Christmas, we'll rest. Why am I saying this? I don't want you to feel bad. I don't want you to feel guilty or think that you failed. No. I believe God is saying something to us here today. That that was merely a small checkpoint in the race that we are running. Bigger checkpoints are to come. Hallelujah. Bigger races are to be won. He says, keep your eyes upon Jesus. And that moment when we lost momentum, it was as if we took our eyes off Jesus. For a moment, we stopped running because we weren't looking at Jesus anymore. The Bible calls Jesus the champion. He has run this race. He has received the full victory. You want to receive the full victory. Your eyes on Jesus. Because there's much more to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe there's much more to come? You still remember this is the year of what? Amen. Much more. I believe God wants us to keep on running. Hit the checkpoints. But let them inspire us. Let them fire us up to run even harder, even faster after them towards the next checkpoint. God wants to flow through you. With the river of endurance. He wants you to run and not get. He wants you to walk and not get tired. He wants you to be filled to the overflow. Are you hungry for that kind of river to flow in you today? Because Jesus said it's easy. Come to me. Believe and receive. Come to me. Believe and receive what I want to give into your life. God wants to flow in these rivers. I want to conclude this morning. I want to conclude. And I titled the application in the following way. I said, 
the title of this application? How can we apply it to our lives? What is the core of this message, Lord? What is this message all about? What are these four rivers all about? I said, is, it is I have to bring the living water. I will. I, Pastor Kyle, have a responsibility. Make sure that I'm filled with the abundant, the everlasting life, the joy that flows over from me. I, Pastor Kyle, have the responsibility to make sure that the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit flows through me so that I can break the oppressions of the enemy in my own heart to defeat the strongholds in my own life. I, Pastor Kyle, have the responsibility to bear fruit so that people can come to me and receive ministry. Hallelujah. I, Pastor Kyle, need to keep on running and not give up. I want to tell you, you have the same responsibility. I have a world I need to impact. I have a world that I need to bring to Jesus. You have a world you need to bring to Jesus. Reading to you the last scripture. Read it with me this morning. It says, Ezekiel 4, 47, 8 to 10. He told me, now Ezekiel sees this vision. This water flows east and descends to the Arabah and then into the sea. The sea of stagnant waters. It talks about the Dead Sea here. The stagnant waters, waters that does not flow. And it says, when it empties into those waters, the sea will become fresh. Ah, say with me, fresh. Wherever the river flows, life will flourish. Great schools of fish. Because the river is turning the salt sea into fresh water. Where the river flows, life abounds. Fishermen will stand shoulder to shoulder along the shore from the Engedi all the way to the north and claim, casting their nets. The sea will teem with fish of all kinds, like the fish of the great Mediterranean. Hallelujah. There's a world close to you. You're connected to a dead sea. You're connected to stagnant waters. God wants you to flow into those stagnant waters. And He will bring the life. Amen. You can't bring the life. You're just the channel. Hallelujah. You're the channel. And the Holy Spirit will flow through your speaking. It will flow through your actions. It will throw through, flow through your love for people. And they will start to get life. And it says that the rivers will fill up with many fish. The Bible talks about fish, I get excited, because it talks about the harvest, hallelujah. It talks about salvations, it talks about people who are going to get to Jesus. It talks about Peter who throws the net over and can't bring it back into the boat. Hallelujah, do you remember that story? It says if we start to become the conduits, the channels, the rivers to our world, we'll start to see exactly what's happening in the We will start to see the rivers fill up with every kind of fish. Jesus for nations. Every kind of fish from every nation, every corner of the earth. The place will fill up. Hallelujah. That is my heart this morning. I hope that you catch on to it this morning that God wants to flow into you. Just let this message pass you by. Please stand with me this morning. I would love to pray with you. Close your eyes just for a moment. Lord, thank you. Come and thank you, Father, for this message. Lord, this message stirs a passion in our souls. It stirs a hunger within inside of us. Lord, this message calls us to focus again. To make sure that we are positioned at your feet, Jesus. Let me tell you here today, as you're standing in this place, Jesus shouts out to the crowd. Shouts out to us. He says, come to me. He, he comes and he talks to the Samaritan woman here. He talks to the person at the well. You've been struggling, you've been pushing hard, you've been surviving, but you're not there yet and you haven't received the living water. Jesus talks to you this morning. He talks to the people who've been caught up in religion this morning. He says, come and break out of that mindset. Break out of those laws because the life is found in me and me alone. Jesus speaks to hearts this morning. And as you're in this presence, I, I want to give you an opportunity. Really come to Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. Say, yes, Jesus, that is me. 
I come and abandon myself before you. I come and lay down anything that wasn't from you. I strip off every weight. Lord, I, I, I leave that sin in the past, but I need your help, Lord. And if that is you this morning, I want you to be bold this morning. I want you to raise your hand as an outcry to the Lord. Say, Lord, that is me. Come on, if it is you this morning, if you say, Jesus, I need you. I need your living water to flow in me. Raise your hand loud and high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to pray with those who raise their hand. Because when you raise your hand this morning, you're saying, God, make me a channel. Oh, and I loved last week's scripture, so where the Bible said that the river flows from the throne of God, the Lamb beside it. The river flows down, crystal clear water flows down on both sides. It starts to grow. Trees start to grow. And it has leaves on these trees. And these leaves, they bring healing to the Lord, I pray for your people today. I pray that every person here in this place who has a heart that is hungry for you, that you fill them right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and touch people right now in this atmosphere. Holy Spirit, fill hearts with hope again. Lord, show them the answer. God, come. I pray that you show them the cracks in their pool of Siloam. Lord, show them the brokenness. Come like a mighty river, Holy Spirit, and break the strongholds of the enemy, the lies that have become strongholds in their mind. Lord, come, Holy Spirit. Release the oppression over your people, Lord. Heal your people, Lord, today so that they can become the healing to our city, to our nation.